Welcome children and today we are back after a lovely weekend and we're going to do the chapter on nationalism in Europe and this is part four of the chapter and we are starting from Solvary. Now what is Solvary? Children if you remember I told you Napoleon came and when Napoleon came Napoleon conquered you know so many places small 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 places now the whole of Germany was divided into 39 places. Germany was divided into 39 states. And believe me, to rule 39 states, each having its own distinct culture, each having a totally different tradition, sometimes weights and measures were different. Sometimes the currencies were different. So it was very difficult to rule that particular country. Now, what they decided is, it was very detrimental for trade and commerce. Because when they went to one place, they had to use a different weight and measure. Went to another place, had to calculate different weights and measures. And it was a big, big issue, a big, big problem. So what they decided, let us form a custom union and at the initiative of Prussia, they formed a custom union, a union they formed and this union was called Solvary. Now what did this union do? Now this union children, what they did was, you know, they firstly, every to go like, let me give you a common example. To Kota to Bundi, Bundi to Jalavar, Jalavar to Devi, whichever province they cross, whichever state they cross, they had to pay taxes. There were taxes there. So can you imagine, by the time the product reached the 39th state, by taxes adding and adding and adding, how expensive the product was. So what they decided was, let us remove all tax barriers. Secondly, they had 30 currencies, 30 in 39 states, 30 different currencies. And what they did was, they reduced the currency to two, just two currencies in all the 39 places of Germany. And the third thing they did was, they developed a very, very strong network of railways. Why railways? Firstly, it unites the country because you can go from station to station and unite the entire country. Goods can be reached to every country. Raw material from every, from every place, sorry, not country, state. Raw material from every state can be purchased and brought to one center from there it can be exported and that is the reason why Zolverine was formed and that was the best thing that could have that could have ever happened now kindly note down children and please put the heading Zolverine now is take down Napoleon's administrative Napoleon's as administrative measures created countless small principalities. Countless small principalities comprising of a federation, comprising of a federation of thirty nine states. Each of these had, each 
of these had their own currency each of these had their own currencies weights and measures currencies weights and measures and duties and duties such conditions were obstacles such conditions were obstacles to economic growth such conditions were obstacles to economic growth in 1834 in 1834 please highlight a custom union a custom union or zollverein highlight this a custom union or zollverein here you highlight was formed at the initiative of prussia at the initiative of prussia this union this union number 1 abolished tariff barriers this union abolished tariff barriers number 2 reduced the currency from reduced the currency from 30 to 2 reduced the currency from 30 Two, two. Number three. Created a network of railways. Created a network of railways. To stimulate mobility. now children pay attention now this what they did now they decided let this take into consideration coming back to the rule of the king that is conservatism but they thought coming back to the old rule of the kings you know was not going to be possible they needed to bring about a little changes in the conservative rule that is in the rule of the autocracy in the rule of the kings they needed to bring about a little change now what was that little change that they were to bring about first they thought we have to modernize the army 
you know, it can't be on that old standard, the king is sitting on an elephant and then, you know, the soldiers out there. We have to bring about a modernization. And very important, we need to bring about a modernization in the system of administration. We have to abolish the feudal system, that is the zamindari system, serfdom. Serfdom is bonded laborers. We have to forget about them. We have to move forward with them. And they thought we will bring about these changes. And now children, what happened was a few of them, for example, Britain, remember the names, I'll dictate it to you, Britain, Russia, Russia, Austria, they got together and they decided, let us fight against Napoleon. Napoleon was, you know, defeating them one by one. But the four of them, when they got together, that is Britain, Russia, Russia, Austria, they defeated Napoleon in the Battle of Waterloo. Now, when they defeated Napoleon, they wanted to bring back the rule of the conservatives. When I say conservatives, Remember better, it is the rule of the kings. So they had a meeting in Vienna and it was called the Treaty of Vienna. In this treaty, Duke Metternich, he was the chancellor. He was the chancellor of Austria. He was the chairman. And what they decided, like this is France, all around France, we are going to establish important territories. Why? So that if another Napoleon stands up from here, all these things will fight against that one Napoleon and they will put that Napoleon down. One part was given to Germany, one part was given to Russia, one part was given to you know, to Saxony, one part was given to Different places, Ireland was given one part. So the whole of France was surrounded. That was what was decided in the Treaty of Vienna. Now, kindly put the heading, Conservatism. Put the heading, Conservatism. Now, Conservatism with modernization. Conservatism with modernization could strengthen could strengthen monarchy. Could strengthen monarchy. A modern army, modern army, efficient bureaucracy, efficient bureaucracy, dynamic economy, dynamic economy. Abolition of feudalism and serfdom. Abolition of feudalism and serfdom could strengthen monarchy in Europe. Could strengthen monarchy in Europe. Now put the next heading, Treaty of Vienna. Treaty, Treaty of Vienna. Treaty of Vienna. Now, First point, I'm giving you two in points so that it becomes 
very easy for you to study. First point, Britain, Russia, Russia, Austria. Britain, Russia, Russia, Austria. Defeated Napoleon. Defeated Napoleon and met at Vienna. Number two. Meeting was hosted by Meeting was hosted by Duke Metternich Meeting was hosted by Duke Metternich, Austrian Chancellor. Austrian Chancellor. Next point. Treaty of Vienna, 1815. Treaty of Vienna, 1815. Stated the following. Stated the following. Now, of this point, write A point. Sub point of this. A. Bourbon Dynasty. B O U R B O N. Bourbon Dynasty. Bourbon Dynasty. was reinstated was reinstated in France B point Netherland Netherland which included Belgium Netherland, which included Belgium, was set in the north. Next point, next C point, Geneva. G E N O A. Geneva was set in the south. Next point, D point. Prussia was given the western frontiers. Was given the western frontiers. Next point. Austria was given control of Northern Italy. Austria was given control of Northern Italy. The next point. German Confederation of German Confederation of thirty nine states German Confederation of thirty nine states was left untouched. Next point, in the east, Russia was given, in the east, Russia was given part of Poland and Prussia a 
part of Saxony. A part of Saxony. Okay, now problems were still faced by them. What are the problems faced by conservators? We shall discuss it in the next class. Right? So we'll meet again in the next class with more further topics.